Washington's first game in Cleveland was ruined by a former national who homered twice against his former team in a 7-2 drive win. Tonight, the Indians look to tie a season high with four straight wins behind Fausto Carmona, who is seeking his first win in exactly one month. It's turn back the clock night to the 1920s at Progressive Field, and we have all the action next on Sports Time Ohio. It's the Tribe of Nationals, Game 2 in the three-game weekend series here tonight at Progressive Field. Coming up in just a few moments, and it's also turn back the clock night to the 1920s. Good evening and welcome into our broadcast. Along with Rick Manning, I'm Al Pulowski, and Rick, I guess we have our 20s scarf on. Uh, I think so. I know this is about as 20s as I can get. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so that's why we're all dressed up here tonight. And, of course, the uh, Nationals are going to wear their 1924 jerseys, the Indians from 1920. All right, speaking of the Cleveland Indians, their hottest hitter right now is indeed Austin Kearns. A couple of home runs last night against the Nationals. And, boy, Austin has been hot really all season, Rick, but especially here in June. Well, uh, he can the way he's swinging the bat, he can hit in any era. Right now he hit a hanging breaking ball and then goes deep, gets a fastball inside. Side and he's been swinging the bat very, very well. And it's been a blessing to have Kearns in the middle part of that lineup this year. In his last eight games, he is 13 for 30, four home runs, scored 11, driven in nine. And this guy is really starting to heat up. And he knows he's been through the been through it before. And when he's uh, healthy, which he is, he's swinging the bat very well. You know, Kearns doing very well. And another player for the Indians that would like to be doing well once again, and he really hasn't done that badly in the last month, is Fausto Carmona. Doesn't have a win. Stuff still looks pretty good, but just can't get in the W count. Well, if they score Fausto a few runs, he's going to be just fine. He's pitched very well three times in that last five games where he does not have a win. He's pitched at least six innings. He's gone more than that two other times. It's just a matter of getting to get some runs. He's really pitched very well, and I think he'll get back on the winning track. Four and five this year, but you can see in his last four starts, just give me a W is what he's saying. He's matched up against J.D. Martin, a former Indians draft pick back in 2001. This is going to be nine days since his last start and only his third start this year. So we'll see what happens tonight on Turn Back the Clock Night to the 1920s. It's the Indians and the Nationals. All the play-by-play -play in the starting lineups coming up next. Indians wearing their 1920 jerseys when they won the World Series and the Washington Nationals wearing their jerseys from 1924 when they did the trick as well. There's a look at the dugout and are these uh, looking pretty snazzy here in 2010. I'll, I'll tell you what, I like those uniforms a lot. I really do. The big C's, the, the blue uh, with the white uniforms, I like them. I like the Indians much better.
And there's the Washington Nationals. A look at what they're wearing. And uh, back in 1924, the Washington Nationals were an American League team. They eventually became the Senators in 56 and then moved to Tech, or rather Minnesota, in the early 60s. Then the next team that came in is we go look at Bob Tayak, the PA announcer with the Barker call. They also were in the American League. They moved to Texas. So this is the first team, this one on the field tonight, that's actually the National League from Washington, D.C. Okay, well, let's, let's get it on. So the Indians take the field. Let's take a look at tonight's starting lineup for the Washington Nationals. And manager Jim Riggleman. Niger Morgan will lead it off. Then Guzman, Dunn, Zimmerman, Willingham. You see his uh, numbers there. Is, uh, he's done very well. He'll be at left field tonight with the DH last night. Harris the DH tonight. Bernardina, Kennedy, and Nieves rounded out for Washington. Well, tonight's starting pitcher brought to you by the Indian Team Shops, where you get two free tribe tickets when you spend $50. Fausto Carmona making start number 13. He's looking for win number five. It's been a five-start drought for Fausto. Not that he has pitched poorly by any means. He has had zero run support in his last two starts, covering 14 innings. So tough to win a game when your team doesn't score for you. We'll see if Fausto can turn it around. He has uh, He's 0-1 in his career against Washington that last game came uh, to a loss at, in Washington in uh, 2007, a 4-1 loss. We'll see if he can avenge them here at home today. Let's take a look at the Home Depot doing more on defense. Indians defensive lineup. It's Kearns, Crow, and Chu in the outfield. It'll be Peralta, Donald, Valbuena, and Brandon on the infield. Santana again behind the plate tonight. More savings, more doing. That's the power of Home Depot. Now let's take a look at the umpires. Jerry Crawford calling the balls and strikes. Brian Onora is at first base. Scott Berry at second. Phil Cuzzy, who called balls and strikes last night, is at third. And we are just about set for the first pitch this evening as Niger Morgan will step in for the Washington Nationals. Fausto Carmona to deliver the first pitch. 84 degrees. Humid here tonight, but... So far, a nice night for a ball game. Now one and one to Niger Morgan. Showed bunt, but did he offer? No, says third base umpire Phil Cassie. Did not offer, but it was pretty close pitch. Morgan was able to get on base in the first inning last night. But he was cut down in his steal attempts by Carlos Santana. Well, that's something I think they will try tonight if they can get on base. At least be a little more aggressive. Uh, against Carmona, base runners are 17 of 19 this year stealing bags against Fausto. So I would think they would try and be aggressive early. But you have to get on first base. The 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, that ball just foul outside the line. And Niger Morgan, one of those guys, Rick, uh, as a leadoff hitter, just tries to find a way on, a lot like a guy that you used to play with, Miguel DeLanay. Well, you know what? When you're a leadoff hitter, your job is to get on base any way, shape, or form. His is speed, so you try to bunt. You, you know, you slap the ball, you hit it on the ground, you take your walks. Carmona with a nice stab right back up the middle and throws him out for out number one. So one away here in the first inning. Christian Guzman will come to the play. Well, and that's what you do. You, you put it in play. You have two strikes on you, but Carmona is able to field this ball and puts him away for out number one. An easy play for Carmona. He has been so much better this year against left-handed hitters compared to last year. I mean, when you look at Fausto, left-handers, they are hitting just 263 off him. He's been able to command the inside part of the plate this year. Much better than last because he moved over to the first base side of the rubber, and I think that has been the big key for him. Seems to have more confidence this year as well. Well, that's the, that's the number one thing. You know, when, when you're going well, and Fausto is, is one of those guys, he's a big kid is what he is. And, I mean, when he, he believes he can do something, he's a, he, he's a hard worker. He's a happy-go-lucky guy, but he is pitching with much more confidence. 
The 0-2 pitch is down low. Guzman has a history against Carmona. Two for three, of course. Uh, Guzman used to play for the Minnesota Twins, signed uh, with the Washington Nationals after the 2004 season. Get a good look there at those throwback jerseys. Pretty plain on the front going back to 1924. That one lifted in the air, foul, and into the seats. Well, Guzman was a guy when he played in Minnesota on that old uh, sponge turf, you know, in the dome. He would lead the league in triples every year. He would have 14, 15 triples. He'd hit it on that carpet and just, it was like a bug on a rug. Took that one for strike three. Nice pitch by Carmona. He has his first K, and there are two down here in the first inning. Well, must have been looking for something going down. Post a 94-mile-an-hour fastball right there at you. And he couldn't pull the trigger, so Fausto gets his first strikeout. So two away for Adam Dunn. He's 0 for 5 in his career against Carmona with a couple of strikeouts, and he'll take strike one. Getting ahead is so big for Carmona as well. And now it's 0-2. Dunn just fouled that one away. Well, that's about all you could do with it. That's and for it. a big guy and for a power hitter, you know, you have to fall off those tough pitches to stay alive and get one more in hopes that he makes a mistake. That went outside. That's another thing that we've talked about, too, Rick. Carmona getting ahead of the batters, so key for him this year. Well, it goes hand-in-hand hand with almost every starter. Justin Masterson, strike one, uh, is such a big pitch for guys that sometimes are not as consistent as others. It's an easy out into the infield shift, 4-3. And the Nationals go three up, three down. We'll head to the bottom of the first inning here at Progressive Field. Scoreless. to the 1920s. Let's take a look at the Indian starting lineup presented by Progressive Insurance. Progressive, proud to be the official auto insurance provider of the Cleveland Indians. Manager Manny Actis sends Trevor Crow out there first then Chu Santana once again in the three hole. Hafner's been hitting very well of late is cleaning up then it's Kearns. He's also been hot. Brannion, Peralta, Balbuena and Donald. 27-year-old J.D. Martin on the mound for the Nats. Uh, he is making his third start this year. His last start coming nine days ago. This guy was a former Cleveland Sandwich uh, round selection, the 35th overall in the 2001 draft. Made it up to AAA in 08, but is now with the Nats. And, you know, he thought he'd be pitching in this ballpark, but it would not be with another club. J.D. Martin delivers ball one to Trevor Crow. 
Martin had that Tommy John surgery in 2005, which really curtailed his development. He was signed as a minor league free agent in 2008 by Washington. One and one here to Trevor Crow, the Indians' leadoff batter tonight. Now two and one. Martin with the fastball, cutter, curve, slider, and changeup. Cutter is his best weapon. There's Shinsu Chu waiting on deck. It's the first time I've seen Chu. Does he have that protection on his uh, front leg? Looks like he's got a little pad there. Yeah, he does. Like a catcher's. Uh, that, uh, that's the first time I've seen that. Crow swings and misses at the payoff pitch, so he's strikeout victim number one tonight for J.D. Martin. Let's uh, look at the Nationals' defense. They're rated last in the National League. It's Willingham and left, Morgan in center, Bernadina in right, Zimmerman at third, Guzman at short, Kennedy at second, Dunn is at first with Nieves behind the plate. They have made uh, 56 errors in their 62 games. So one away for Shinsu Chu, hitting in the two hole, and he takes a strike from J.D. Martin. Rick, nobody for the Indians has a history against Martin, similar to last night against Adelano. So you'd expect to see hitters taking a few more pitches if possible? Well, that and, yeah, trying to, uh, that first time through. As, as we mentioned, you always feel that the pitcher has a little more of an advantage. But they did a nice job in last night's game, though, that first time through. But it was because of the error in the first inning on Kennedy where they should have been out of the inning off the bat of Russell Brannion, and then Kearns came up and did the damage at a three-run homer. You know, you don't give any extra outs, and it might have been a different ball game early. Saw the numbers there on Shinsu Chu, who's on a nine-game hitting streak. Chu also loves to hit in this ballpark, batting 381 with six of his home runs here at Progressive Field. And there got he, him. Good thing he's got that guard on. I think it might have hit him. He's going to have to turn it around and get it off his... His side, that's a breaking ball that comes in and hits Chu. So he'll head to first on the hit by pitch. Well, he must have known. That's close. It was right in the toe. Right on the foot. That's the second or third guy in this series we've seen get hit right on the foot. Yeah, that'll make you do a quick two-step. So Chew aboard now with one out for Carlos Santana, who made his major league debut last night. Switch hitting catcher who was an undrafted free agent, signed by the Dodgers in 2004. Still looking for that first major league hit. But, uh, hitting is one of the things that has always come naturally to Carlos Santana. Also has a good eye, Rick, and you like to see that in a young hitter. Well, that's why his on-base percentage is so high. He takes the walks down there in, in, in the minor leagues. He has taken them. And it, it's going to be new for him up here because he has to get used to the pitchers. You know, you're starting your whole new book again on guys that you haven't seen before. But, I mean, you just stay with the basics. See the ball, hit the ball. Stay with your program. A couple of close plays over there at first as J.D. Martin keeping Shinsu Chu close, and he's got a decent lead there. Santana hits it hard, but fielded by the second baseman, and a wide throw. That's going to get by Guzman and headed to third base now, and making it without a throw is Shinsu Chu. So Adam Kennedy with a wide throw, and the Indians now with a threat here in the first inning. Well, here you go again. That's going to be an error on Kennedy again in this first inning on a double play ball. He didn't turn one last night when Santana was the hitter. They don't turn it again today. A terrible throw. And he is, uh, you know what, uh, 
And then he, these two games that we've seen, he has played terribly at second base. Open the door for the Indians now. As Chu goes to third base, now the opportunity. First and third and one out. So the second error in as many nights for Adam Kennedy. 57 on the year wow. for the Nationals. And now Travis Hafner to the plate. The Indians have these runners at the corners about the benefit of a base hit here. So here's Travis. Won his last four games is hitting 333. Had that home run last night. Of course, the grand slam on Wednesday night in the eighth inning. Now, anytime the Indians have been playing very well offensively in the last three games, they've scored 26 runs. And when you start to help them out by hitting guys, you make errors, and you give them opportunities, they're going to capitalize. Last three games, they've hit for a 300 average, 354 with runners in scoring position. You know, they've walked 17 times, so they've done the little things offensively you have to do to put some big numbers on the board. And they're a team that has always been outscored early in the game, it seems like. After he takes that for strike two, so now he's down on the count, one, two. J.D. Martin. There's Austin Kearns. He's on deck. A couple of home runs last night, four RBI for the former national. But Hafner trying to see if he can get that run home from third with less than two outs. Two and two now to Travis Hafner. He also prefers progressive field as opposed to the road, batting 316 here at home this year and just 188 on the road. There's the base runners, Chu at third, Santana at first, one out. So Martin will throw over to first. So Will Nieves behind the plate tonight. Ivana Rodriguez getting the evening off. He'll catch Strasburg tomorrow. Well, when you're his age, you get the night before a day game, or he would play today and get tomorrow off, and you've got the big guy going tomorrow. Hafner hits that one well to center field. Morgan will make the play, but Shinsu Chu will tag and score easily. And the Indians are on the board. They lead it 1 0. Sack fly for Travis Hafner. There you go. Get the job done. Let's take a look at yesterday's great clip of the game brought to you by Great Clips. And we have two of them. First, a three run homer here in the first inning, then a solo shot in the fourth. Austin Kearns, two homers, four RBI last night. Relax, you're at Great Clips. So Austin steps in, and Rick, he's been seeing the ball so well here in the month of June. Well, you made a, a comment last night where you say he's not afraid to go deep in the count, you know, or fall behind in the count where you're taking pitches. That goes to show you the confidence hitters have. When they're when you're struggling, they feel like they need all three swings to put the ball in place. So you're swinging at balls out of the zone, and you're trying to do anything you can. When you're swinging the bat well, you have confidence, and you're not afraid to hit from behind in the count. He was 0-2 last night in the first inning. He worked the count back to full before he hit a breaking ball out of the ballpark. And his numbers are computer game numbers for the last eight games. That's always fun. <laughs> yes, it is. Fouls that one off. So he's down on the count here, one and two, with Santana at first base. Two down in the first inning. And a run already home for the Tribe, who lead this one one to nothing. J.D. Martin has thrown over to first base quite a bit here in this first inning. First with Chu and now Santana. Well, I could see throwing over there with Chu, but not really with Santana. He's been over there five times already.
Burns lays off that one, so the count evens at 2-2 two and two now. Here on throwback night to the 1920s, game two of the three-game weekend series with the Washington Nationals tomorrow, the finale at 107. Steven Strasburg against David Huff. And we'll have it for you on Channel 3. Just off the outside corner. So the count goes full now to Austin Kearns. And you see how he takes those close yeah. pitches with two strikes? He just he didn't even offer at it. There's Brandon. He would be next. And strike three called, so Austin Kearns caught looking. Second strikeout for J.D. Martin, but the Indians put a run on the board. They lead it 1-0 after one. Eat fresh by Continental Airlines. Work hard, fly right. And by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Buggy night tonight in downtown Cleveland as we get a look at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And inside the ballpark now with some of the fans. See, you get STO on the banner. We'll do everything we can to get it on here. We go to the top of the second. one nothing try. It's the Indians got a run in the first inning without the benefit of a base hit. It'll be hitters four, five, and six for the Nationals. Zimmerman, Willingham, and Harris. And Zimmerman last night, Rick, 0 for 4. Uh, unusual to see Zimmerman, especially the way he's going, batting nearly 400 uh, the past week and a half to see him take an 0 for 4 night. Well, again, you know, these guys never face the pitchers that they're, you know, going to. They go to Detroit from here, and their next 15 games will be against, you know, American League teams, guys that they really don't face. One and two now to Ryan Zimmerman. You know, it's interesting uh, how interleague play works out. Usually the American League wins, you know, the battle overall when it's all said and done. But I got to tell you, I think there's better pitching now in the National League than in the American League overall. So I'm, it'll be interesting to see how it fares this year. Zimmerman takes that one a little bit inside. And how much of a difference is it, how much of an advantage should I say for the National League team when you go to their park and the, the American League well, pitchers have to bet, which, hey, it's a struggle unless you're, unless you're Dave Burba. But it's a struggle. No, for the most part, <laughs> these guys don't hit, but maybe a week in advance. They started taking batting practice here this week. You know, they'll go out and most of it's bunting. And you're still going to get your chances. When we go on our next road trip and we'll finish up in our league play, We'll have Pittsburgh, Philly, and Cincinnati, and so you'll have nine straight games where the pitcher's going to have to hit. So you're going to lose uh, Hafner. Hafner won't even play. He'll be a very high-priced pinch hitter. Josh Willingham on deck. Ryan Zimmerman has worked the count full here against Carmona. 
Leadoff batter for the Nationals in the top of the second inning. And he hits that one on the ground to third. Peralta makes the play, one down. All right, here we go. Hopefully I'll do better with this than last night. Time for the AT&T trivia question. Tonight's question, who holds the major league record for most home runs in a six-game stretch? That means he had a home run in each of the games. Interesting. AT&T, rethink possible. I kind of have an idea, but my idea last night was pretty pathetic, so I don't no, know. No, that's all right. We yeah. still like pathetic ideas up here. <laughs> what a way for Josh Willingham as he'll take ball one from Carmona. You can write down your guess, and I'll write down mine. All right. We'll, uh, there we go. Okay. We'll see where we're at here. I think you're going to be closer than me. How do you know? I just think you are. Because <laughs> this guy went longer than six games, but I think he just hit one in each one of the ball games that he hit him in. We'll see. Think about it out there, too. Of course, we'll have that answer for you coming up later here on the broadcast. 3-0 to Josh Willingham, the left fielder tonight for manager Jim Riggleman. He was the designated hitter last night for the Nats. 3-1 and one to the former Florida Marlin with Willie Harris. He just swapped spots with Willingham tonight. He's the DH. Last night, Harris was in left field. A fly ball to center. Shallow. Crow coming in. Donald going out. He'll make the play. Well, tomorrow is going to be Kids Fun Day, and you can say big with the new WKYC Summer Sunday $3 Kids and Fun Day offer. Buy an adult ticket to see the Indians and the Nationals. Get up to two tickets for kids 12 and under for just 3 bucks. Steven Strasburg will be on the mound. Uh, up-and-coming prospect. Can't wait to see him pitch. He'll be matched up against David Huff. Get your tickets now. Check them out on Indians.com. It will be a fun day at the ballpark you know, tomorrow. You may never get a chance to see him pitch again here. That's right. You never know. That's right. You just never know. You would think at least for the next six years the Nationals are going to have him, most likely. So why would you see him? The, the next time we play the Nationals, we'll probably go, go there. there. Right. Because we were there in 07. They're here this year, so... You never know if you're going to see him again here. It's his second major league start, and I was talking to Rob Dibble and their broadcasters earlier, and they said this kid's a treat, fun to watch. And they said y you don't do what he did in his first start in your first major league start, right. 14 strikeouts, no walks. <laughs> yeah, you just amazing. don't do that. You know, the command I mean, you're talking so about impressive. numbers like Bob Feller and things like that. I mean, some of the greatest of all time. Not that this guy's going to be that, but I'll tell you what, he could be. One and two to Willie Harris, who takes down low for two and two. To see his stuff, Rick, that's what's so impressive. It translated from high school to college, from college to the minors, and now for one start, as you said, from the minors to the major leagues against the Pirates on Tuesday night. Well, I'm, I'm glad I'm going to be here. If you're a baseball fan, you want to see it. Yep, no place better than to be here at Progressive Field tomorrow. Nats go three up, three down for the second consecutive inning. We'll head to the bottom of the second. Tribe leads it, one nothing.
It's here tonight at the ballpark. Good to see you. It's turned out to be a nice night for baseball. A little bit muggy here this evening. Russell Brannion, the batter. Hitter 6, 7, and 8. And manager Manny Actis lineup here in the bottom of the second. Brannion, Peralta, Valbuena. Russell will lead it off against J.D. Martin. 27-year-old. You know, J.D. Martin, when he was taken out of high school, Rick, back in 2001 by the Indians with that supplemental pick, he pitched 22 consecutive scoreless innings to start his pro career. I mean, coming out of high school, he was extremely highly touted. And uh, he had a good minor league career with the Tribe, really, until that Tommy John surgery in 2005, and it, it took him a while to, to come back from that. As it always does. It seems like every pitcher has had Tommy John at some point in time in their career. But, you know, he's a lot like the guy that pitched last night, Adelano. They don't look overpowering. 90 tops and a little breaking ball. I mean, it's not what, you, what we're going to see tomorrow. And Russell Brandon has tonight's first base hit to right field. So he's aboard with nobody out here in the second inning for Johnny Peralta hitting in the seven hole. Russell Brandon, now we've seen that uh, few more singles from Russ than normal here in the month of June. Well, anytime, go ahead, get your base knocks. And I'll tell you what happens. Home run hitters are streaky. You've got to keep your, you know, you get your hits, you get on base, and then sooner or later you're going to get into a groove, and it's a byproduct of putting a good at-bat together when the home runs start coming. So Russell on at first base, and if you're just joining us, no need to adjust the rabbit ears. We're throwing it back to the 1920s. The Indians with their 1920 jerseys when they won the World Series. And the Washington Nationals, when they won the series for the American League back in 1924, they're wearing those jerseys. And, uh, they did a pretty nice job with both of those tonight. And we've seen uh, we've seen old pictures, Rick, and these uniforms are pretty darn close to what you see when you look in the history books. Well, I'll tell you what, I like the looks of them. To be honest with you, a little blue pinstripe in them. I like the blue. Simple and clean. Yeah, big C. No, no names on the back, just a nice big number. One and two here to Johnny Peralta. And hits that curveball. Fair. Inside the bag at third. It goes down to the left oh, field corner. No. And the fan grabbed it. Look at it. He's, he's waving it. No, someone's going to come up and punch him. Look at it. He doesn't realize what he just did. Uh, nobody was cheering you, pal. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, oh, I'm not supposed to do that? Yeah, ground rule double. And I think that's all they would have gotten anyway. It's a breaking ball that Peralta's out in front of, and it did get right over the bag. There's the big hop, and out of the way, Phil Cuzzy. But he saw it was fair, and there's the fan. That thing would have deflected out to Willingham in left field. So it would have been the same situation second and third anyway. That's where Johnny Peralta is after the ground rule double. Tried with back-to-back -back hits. Now runners at second and third and nobody out for Luis Valbuena. He'll take a pitch on the outside corner. Luis struggling at the plate this year. Had a good weekend last weekend in Chicago. If he could play in Chicago the entire time, Rick, he'd be a dangerous hitter with the way he's hit the ball there. And he sends that one to left center. Morgan runs it down. Tagging and scoring with the trot is Russell Brannion. And the Indians have a 2-0 lead and a couple of sack flies tonight. Well, I like that approach from Valbuena much better. Not trying to pull a ball, hit it with a little authority the other way, and he did. I mean, when he stays on the baseball, he gets a little pull happy. Now, that's a pretty good pitch, a sinker down and away. But you know what? He had great plate coverage, goes the other way, hits this ball on the line. He gets rewarded. He's a sacrifice fly. Nice job by Valbuena. So he gets the RBI. And the Indians still have a runner at second base. Now one out for Jason Donald. And he'll show bunt and take that pitch a little bit low for a ball. Numbers on Donald this year. He's been playing shortstop, mostly with us. Dribble Cabrera out. Spent a game at second base this week for the first time at the major league level. 
Well, and that's the bulk of his position will come at the shortstop side of it. It's a natural shortstop. But when Cabrera gets ready to come back, they'd like to get him some work over at second base while they called up Hernandez because he can play shortstop and then give more games to Donald over at second. And Donald lines that one to right for a base hit. Peralta held up, and now they'll hold him at third as the Indians will have runners at the corners once again, this time with one out. Good piece of hitting by Jason Donald. Yes, it was. That's a good swing going the other way. Just got hit it too hard. They were playing him shallow. That's a pitch down in the strike zone. He shoots the other way. That's a good approach right there. So three hits out of the last four batters and a hard out by Valbuena to score the run in the inning. And that's not a bad approach there because, uh, I mean, Martin is not going to throw it past you. So what you want to do is try and force him to bring that fastball inside. If you start taking your base hits the other way, just like Peralta, I mean, Peralta pulled the high breaking ball, but like Donald, and you prove you're going to go that way, it'll force him to come inside on you. So now Trevor Crow with runners at the corners and one away. Trevor had a two RBI base hit last night against the Nats. And he fouls that one off to left. Hey, the month of June here when the Indians hit a home run, Sports Time Ohio, Shell, and Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care are giving away free gas. Our first contestant today is Jeremy Frazier from Amherst. Shell will provide $300 in free gas for each home run the Indians hit and $1,000 in free gas plus a set of tires from Conrad's for each grand slam hit here in the month of June on STO. Visit STOHD.com to register. We gave away... $900 worth of gas last night with those three homers, two by Kearns and one by Hafner. And a couple of nights ago, Wednesday night, Travis after the Grand Slam. So we've had our share of winners here this week. Keep it rolling. They've got to make up for some lost time. So Trevor Crow at the plate. He struck out his first time up. And he takes that pitch for a ball. J.D. Martin, the former first-round pick of the Tribe, on the hill tonight. Said he always thought that he would eventually make it to this mound here at Progressive Field. Just never imagined it would be in a Washington Nationals jersey. Pro fouls that one. I think now, he hit himself. Well, he had to. If he doesn't hit that ball, it's going to hit him in his chest. I don't know if that was a hit and run, a run and hit, or what. But Crow, if he could have, should have taken that pitch. Unless it was a hit and run. I mean, that ball was right at him. Yeah, Donald was moving. That was self-defense. Believe me, they saw that ball go right off of it. And now, that that tells me it had to be a hit and run. Rick Jameson, Manny Acta coming out. They're saying, where did it hit? Well, it hit and it hurt. I'd love to get a replay and watch this ball, how close it is to him. There's a good shot. That might have hit him in the back hip. He's got a clear. He's got to clear it out right off the knee, the front knee. Ouch. That is not that. That hurts. Watch how high up the leg he falls it off. So Crow stays in there. And now the count one and two to the Indian center fielder. Fouls that one away. Martin came inside on him again. You can tell he's still smarting. When you dealt with that, Rick, when you played, hey, I never have fouled him off up there. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I, I hit the ball to try to go the other way. I would never pull a ball like that. That one was so far inside. I, I've never hit a ball that high up. Yeah. Never. Always got it around the feet? Yes, and I rarely fouled them off my feet because yeah, I wasn't a pull hitter. I remember that. So one and two to Crow. And he hits that one high in the air to short left field. The shortstop, Guzman, going out. He'll make the play. Runners hold, and now there's two outs. 
We'll plan a family outing uh, at Sunday Tribe game and save big with the new Key Bank Fun Bunch four packs. Get four tickets, forty dollars to spend on food and drinks, four Indian hats, and a parking pass for just ninety six dollars. Plus, get access to all of the Key Bank Kids Fun Day activities as well. Tickets are on sale now. Shinsu Chu, the batter, with two away here and runners at the corners for the Tribe. Chu was hit by a pitch back in the first inning, came around and scored. on the Travis Hafner sacrifice fly. Now he'll try to drive in the run from third. And he'll take a ball outside. Well, this is where they've been picking each other up. You know, that guy doesn't get the job done with a man on third and less than two outs. They've been successful doing it with two outs. This year, for whatever reason, the Tribe seems to hit better when there are runners on base, when there's two outs, yeah, runners in scoring it, position. It doesn't make sense. Then they do with less than two outs, and it's usually an easier job. With two outs, that's the toughest hit in baseball to get. Now, the Indians has a team batting 268 with runners in scoring position. There you see the two out numbers with runners in scoring position. It gets better. Then when you load the bases, they're hitting 362. Chu hits that one on the ground. It's through. Base hit for Shin Su Chu and another two out RBI as the Tribe takes a three to one lead and over to third base goes Jason Donald. That's what I'm talking about right there. Picking up your teammates. Chu does that. That ball wasn't hit all that hard. It was just placed perfectly in the hole. That's what happens when you got that runner on first and third. You got to hold them on and this is going to be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. A two out base hit. Here we come. And there's nothing you can do. So you send them. It's men at the corners again. And that'll give Santana an opportunity to get his first major league hit. Fourth hit of the game and in the inning for the Tribe. And Shinsu Chu extends his hitting streak to 10 games. And now Carlos Santana, who lines that one fair inside the line. His first major league hit will include at least one RBI. Here comes Chu around third. They'll send him the throw home. He's safe. Indians lead it five to nothing. Carlos Santana, a two RBI double. Yeah, they're going to take that ball and bring it out of play. It's in the Bat Boys' hands. Let's go. Two run double for his first major league hit. Our congratulations to Carlos Santana. And I'll tell you, it was a big one a two out double to add and make it a four run inning. And he smoked that ball down the first baseline. I mean, Dunn had no chance of fielding that ball down into the corner. And with Chu on first base, Smitty gets uh, aggressive. And you can see the relay throw a little late. So good hustle by Chu. It's a five-zip ball game. And there'll be a meeting on the mound for J.D. Martin. And how about Carlos Santana's? Boy, he just laced that ball. To right. We watched him in batting practice here the last couple of days, Rick. I mean, the ball just jumps off that kid's bat. Well, he's got to feel better that first major league hit comes out. Now he can take a deep breath and relax. They're going to take a little breather. Steve McCaddy, the pitching coach, comes out. And it's, it, it, I've never seen it fail. That one guy gets a two-out base hit. It seems like everybody else relaxes a little bit more, and they go up there and swing a little freer, a little easier as Batista. Miguel Batista up, getting loose. Well-traveled Miguel Batista, 39 years old. J.D. Martin has run into trouble here in the second inning. Four runs already in the Tribe with five hits. And they lead this one. 5 nothing is Travis Afner. He got the RBI in the first with a sack fly is up. But he hits a can of corn to center field. Niger Morgan will get under it, make the play, and the inning's over. The Tribe offense continues to roll. Four runs in the second inning. They lead it 5 nothing.
our Miller Taste Greatness moment will be. Carmona will face hitters 7, 8, and 9 in the Nationals batting order. Bernadina, Kennedy, and Nieves. Well, Fausto has got to be thankful for his teammates because they did not score him a run in his last 14 innings he's been on the mound. So he's looking up saying, thank you very much. I've got five to work with now. It's good to see Fausto get some runs. As we talked about it's in the good preview. to see everybody get some yeah. runs. <laughs> you know, Fausto really he doesn't have a win in exactly a month, but he hasn't pitched badly. The no. ERA is around three and a half. You know, that's why I say ERA is over, overrated. In his last five starts, the least he's pitched is six innings. He's done that three times. He went six and two-thirds and also went eight and never gave up more than four earned runs, three, and then three times two runs. So he definitely pitched good enough to win a few ball games. Kearns by the line and left, makes the play. Bernadina, a flyout victim here in the third, one away for Adam Kennedy. Fans having a good time here tonight on throwback night to the 1920s between innings. They're playing the big band music. Sort of like You're that. You're enjoying it. Yeah. Yes, I, I am. am too. It's a nice, uh, nice change of pace. As Adam Kennedy looks at strike one. And then oh. after tomorrow, then you can sit back here and play your baby grand yeah. between innings. I'll do that. <laughs> Bring my fedora back out. I'm sure you've got it packed going home with you tonight. <laughs> you look good in that hat. Not as good as you with the press pass in the fedora. There's Adam Kennedy with the first hit of the night for the Nationals. It comes with one away here in the third inning. So he's aboard. That'll bring Will Nieves to the plate, the number nine hitter. And Nieves has been... In a slump, batting just 0-91 in his last 13 games, 3 for 33. But he gets the call here this evening with Yvonne Rodriguez getting the break. He'll catch Strasburg tomorrow. Strasburg and Huff, 1-0-7. His first pitch time here at Progressive Field. Going to be a fun day at the ballpark. Strike one to Will Nieves. There's Yvonne Rodriguez. And a couple of hits last night for the Nats. Grounded to third. Peralta to Valbuena for one on to first, and the Indians turn the double play. Nationals done here in the third inning. Carmona's faced the minimum. We'll head to the bottom half. 5 nothing. Try.
Bob has the lead as we head to the bottom half of the third inning. Indians are ready with those five runs home on five hits tonight. And boy, in their last four games now, Rick, I believe it's went up to 35 hits. Yeah, they're they're starting to roll. They're playing good offensively. It's it's nice to see. They definitely have some business to take out on a few teams. Some of the young folks here enjoying throwback night to the 1920s. Stay hydrated, my friend. <laughs> nice. It'll be Kearns, Brannion, and Peralta here in the bottom of the third. Hitters five, six, and seven. J.D. Martin delivers ball one already. 46 pitches tonight for the Nationals right-hander. Well, and out of the 13 batters he has faced, he's been out of the stretch to 10 of them. So he hasn't been out of that full windup for very long. One and one now on Austin Kearns, who we talked about has been so hot in his last eight games, 433, but he's been out for a while. His last 16 games, he's batting 333 with four homers and 11 runs batted in going back to May 25th. And in the 47 games he's played this year, he's reached base in 42 of those. So Kearns has been exactly what the Indians wanted. Rick, in the offseason, the Indians talked about getting that right-handed bat, and they found it with a minor league invite. That's hard to believe. And I'll tell you right, right now, there's a lot of other teams that would kill to have this guy in their outfield. One just left town, the Boston Red Sox. They would love to have this guy in left field. I don't know too many teams that would well, like to hear this exactly guy right, right. Now. I mean, he's just he's just been a pleasant surprise. The ball hit high in the air to center. Morgan collects for the first out. And let's go back to our Sports Time Ohio update desk. First time tonight, and Dave Chidowski, a little bit of history in Fenway Park, right, Dave? You got it, Al. Phillies and the Red Sox, Daniel Nava. Who? Daniel Nava. First pitch he sees in the majors, not just a home run, but a grand slam. 10-2, to the Red Sox win it. Only the fourth player to connect for a slam in his first at bat. Well, oh, that is amazing. That's it's a way second. to endear yourself. Yeah. And Russell Brandon lines that one to right center. Boy, he's hit the ball on the nose a couple of times here today, and he's got back-to-back -back singles. So one away with Brandon at first, and second player to do that. Of course, Rick, the first you called this game in Arlington. Boy, I remember it well. September 2nd, Kevin Kuzminov didn't know if his parents were going to get there or not, but the first pitch he sees, he's playing for an injured Travis Hafner, ended up hitting a grand slam. And Hafner, that was the year he had all those slams working. And there's the information for you. Uh, Kuzminov was the first, and then Nava today to do it on the first pitch. It's Peralta's first pitch swinging and popping it high in the air to left field. Willingham coming all the way in to make the catch, two away. It's, uh, something we only saw way early on to, to hit a home run, hit a grand slam in your first at bat. And then since 2005, we've seen three players do it. And since 2006 now, two players do it on the first pitch they saw. So that was uh, certainly a fun time when Kuzminov did that back in 2006. Yeah, but it's uh, maybe a little more fun for that kid today because he was in his home park yeah. doing it. The Red Sox throttling the Phillies 10-2. to two is Again. Philadelphia's offense, just where has it gone? Here's Luis Valbuena batting with two outs and Brandon at first base. Indians with the run in the first, four in the second. J.D. Martin just trying to get through this third with a zero on the board. And a good curveball there. He's got that good 12 to 6 breaking ball. And he's ahead 0 2 to Valbuena with the sack fly back in the second inning. And a swing and the miss. The Evans held on. Third strikeout for J.D. Martin. First time the Indians don't score in an inning. We'll head to the fourth. 5 nothing, Cleveland.
five to nothing. Top of the order for the Nats, Morgan, Guzman, and Dunn. The hitters as Carmona delivers strike one to Niger Morgan. Grounded out back to Carmona in the first inning. Morgan with five triples this year. That's tied for second in Major League Baseball. It's two triples shy of his career high. He set last year with seven. Morgan came over in a trade with the Pirates in 09. Slaps that one foul. So Carmona jumps ahead of Morgan 0 2. Well, Foster, that first time through the lineup, they were one for nine. Uh, he usually gets better as the game goes on. This year, the second time through, they get, goes down. He starts it off at 296 the first time, 242 the second, and then 169 the third. So that sinker starts moving. He gets a good feel. And he's only given up the one hit, and he got the double play to follow it. Morgan pounds it on the ground to Valbuena. He makes the play and one's out here in the fourth inning. Well, the Indians will take on the Mets after an off day on Monday. It's a three-game series. It'll start Tuesday and go through Thursday. Tickets are on sale now. And check out the AM, PM, all-you-can-eat seats where you can get unlimited food, dogs, nachos, popcorn, and Pepsi products for just $32 a ticket. 216-420-HITS or visit Indians.com for the information. I tried with some great deals this year, and you can find... All of those at Indians.com. Christian Guzman, the batter, struck out his first time up. Carmona's only strikeout victim thus far. 32-year-old switch hitter. He grounds that one to first. Branion makes the play. Two down. Well, you love to see the ground ball outs, and Fausto has eight of them. Fausto seems to be in that groove here tonight. So good to see for the Tribe to get him back closer to what he was in 2007. This will be the 12th batter he's faced tonight. The minimum. As Rick pointed out, that one single that he gave up in the last inning to Adam Kennedy, he was erased on a double play. Well, and Fausto, that's his 11th double play he has induced this year. And, I mean, that, that goes hand-in-hand hand with this staff. The Indian staff are sinker ballers. They get the ground balls. Masterson, 18 ground ball outs against Boston. That's why they've turned 81 double plays as a team. They may give up a lot of hits, but they also get the ground ball and they can get the double plays. Dunn swinging through it there. He's now 1-2. Done a ground out victim in the first inning. And, Rick, going to what you said, eight of the 11 outs thus far have been ground outs. One's been a pop out. One's been a strikeout. Just one fly out so uh -huh. far tonight. That, that's, that's a great, great sign for a sinker baller. And he K's done. So Carmona rolling here tonight. Second strikeout. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth. Indians lead it 5 nothing.
night to the 1920s. Indians hitters 9-1-2 and two against J.D. Martin. Jason Donald, first batter here in the bottom of the fourth. Jason singled and scored in the second inning. Has the average up to 247 now. And hits that one to right again. Bernadina goes over to make the play. One out here in the fourth. And time now for our subway. Fresh face of the game. And this is a familiar face. Matt Laporta. Look what he's done in his last three games. Said home runs. Five home runs in his last three games in Triple A Columbus. It's our subway fresh face of the game. Subway, play hard, eat fresh. So four, or uh, let's see here. Five homers in 16 at bats. Eight for 16 for Laporta. I'd say that's a pretty good number. That's there. a pretty good slugging percentage, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. He had three homers in one game a couple of nights ago. And he's getting the opportunity to play every day in Columbus. Crow bounces that one right back to J.D. Martin. Makes a nice play. He's down and two away here in the fourth inning for Shinsu Chu. Well, it was a head high, one hopper. Easy play for Martin. So Shinsu Chu to the plate, who's been on base twice tonight, has scored twice. He was hit by a pitch in the first inning and singled in the second. Big curveball there, just inside for J.D. Martin. One and one now to Chu. Gets ahead of him one and two. So Martin, who gave up five runs combined in the first two innings, got through the third unscathed. And gets the first two try batters here in the fourth, so he's settling down a little bit. Pitch count at 62, 41 of those for strikes, but you know, the Indians got to him quickly in this ballgame. Well, again, that first inning, it, a run was given up without even giving up a hit. We'll play there, 3 1. Tribe goes 3 up, 3 down. So we played four at Progressive Field. Indians lead it 5 0. Coffee and ice, McDonald's. I'm loving it. By Key Bank, stop in and start a conversation and unlock your possibilities. And by Panini's, visit Panini'sGrill.com for a list of new locations. Edgewater Park, what a gorgeous night tonight in downtown Cleveland. You see that jet ski go by? 
I wonder if that was Mike Bachman, my pregame show producer. I think he was heading out to uh, parts unknown. Well, that's good. You're doing the game. <laughs> let him go. Absolutely. There he goes. <laughs> and what a way to go, man. <laughs> Zimmerman leads it off here in the top half of the fifth inning for the Nationals. And they have pounded the strike zone with this guy in the first two games. He has five at bats. He's seen now count these two 19 pitches. He's seen 14 strikes, and he's 0 for 5. Between Westbrook and Carmona here. And Zimmerman came into this series very hot. He was batting 395 in his last 12 games before last night. And he's down again, this time swinging. Third strikeout for Carmona. One away in the fifth. Nice little slider. Outside part of the plate going right there. Tough pitch. In hopes when you're a hitter like Zimmerman, who's a very good hitter, you just hope to foul that pitch off. So now Josh Willingham to the plate. He popped out his first time up. Another strike from Fausto Carmona. And, boy, Rick, he's dealing tonight. I mean, he's hitting his spots and sliders tight. Fastball's looking good with yeah. a little bit of sink. 40 strikes out of 57 pitches. You know, when you get into a rhythm, and, and you know what? It doesn't matter who's behind home play. It, it's Santana tonight, and he's in a nice group. You know, I know Mike Redman has caught all his starts this year, but this kid behind the plate, man, when Carmona, he's nice and relaxed and throwing strikes. I could get back there and catch him. <laughs> and so long to Josh Willingham. Fourth strikeout for Carmona, his second in a row. Two quick outs here in the fifth inning for the Nats. That one disappears. That one's straight down. And that's what you call expanding the strike zone. Making that hitter swing at your pitch. Well, Carmona's got the good sharp break going tonight. He just yeah. keeps pounding the strike yes, zone. Yes, he does. He's he's working really well. Great wit rhythm. He's not he's not stepping off the rubber tonight. I wouldn't blame him. But I'm saying that's what you like to see. You gotta get the ball. I mean, you know what you want to do. Get yourself together, get right back on the rubber and get after it. Working fast in that groove tonight. One and one here to Willie Harris, who grounded out his first time up. Fouls that one away, and again, Carmona ahead of the batter, one and two. And the Nationals have to know that they got to be ready to swing the bat because Carmona's throwing strikes. Well, that's one thing. When you have stuff like Carmona has as a hitter, you don't like guys to get ahead of you 0-2 or 1-2 counts because, you know what, they can bury you. The one thing that the, uh, Washington's pitcher Adelano did last night, he got up 0-2, 1-2, but he couldn't put the hitters away. Tonight, it's a different story for uh, Carmona. He's faced the minimum thus far. Harris out on strikes. Carmona strikes out the side. And fabulous Fausto looking good tonight. Indians lead at 5 nothing.
Fabulous Fausto, Rick. Five strikeouts tonight. <laughs> a one hitter as he's faced the minimum. Fabulous Fausto. Didn't you break you that like out that, in huh? 2007? Oh, he's fabulous again. Well, no, I don't like it. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> of course I'm going to. <laughs> Heart of the order for the drive in the fifth. Santana, Hafner, and Kearns. Hitters three, four, and five. And Santana with his first major league hit his last time up. A two RBI double. Indians lead this one five to nothing. Carlos Santana now has been on base twice again tonight and hits that one deep to right field. Looking up, it's the right fielder, Bernadina, <laughs> and he can keep looking. It's gone. First major league home run for Carlos <laughs> Santana. Now, what, what do you got for him? Sensational Santana. You named it. I like it. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, after that first hit comes, you knew he was going to relax a little bit and put a great swing on the baseball. So why not follow that up with a first major league home run? And they will retrieve that ball. Rick Danberg's probably out there fighting for it right now. Looked like it might have been a high changeup. He's, yes, it is. It's a deep grip. There's a changeup. He's going to leave it up out over the plate. Santana's kept his hands back. And wow, put a nice swing on the ball. Make it six zip. Welcome to the bigs. Six nothing tribe. Carlos Santana. A towering home run to right field. His first major league homer. And watch this, Rick. He comes Silent to the Silent treatment. Look at that. <laughs> Nobody was going to say a word to him. So he said, I'm just going to go down the runway. You see Nunley, though. The hitting coach had to say something. There's no way a hitting coach is going to let him get away with it. Hafner grounds out for the first out here in the fifth inning. I think he's going to fit right in, Carlos Santana. Let's take a look at tonight's league leaders. As Austin Kearns steps in, and the league's five star home runs in June. Brought to you by the GMC Sierra. Never send a truck to do a Sierra's job. And Austin Kern, second. And the bigs with home runs. And by the way, that home run for Carlos Santana, Rick, that means $300 That's right. in shell gas for Jeremy Frazier from Amherst. Well, congratulations. I'm sure Jeremy has a new favorite player right now. $300 in gas. And our next contestant, Jim Yates from New Albany, Ohio. So $300 in shell gas each time an Indian hits a home run in June. To enter, go to stohd.com. And as Travis Hafter showed us a couple of nights ago, if you hit a grand slam, it's $1,000 in gas, courtesy of Shell, STO, and Conrad's, and four new tires. Nice play there. And third base by Zimmerman to retire Kearns. Two away. Send along some birthday wishes. I'd like to send along a very special happy birthday to Vinny Safani, turning two today. Vinny, happy birthday. George Shaker of Fairview Park, turning 70. And uh, one of Gary Coach's favorites, Vic Damone, turning 82 today. So, Vic, happy birthday from Gary. That's 82 right. on throwback night, huh? Yes, indeed. All right. <laughs> Here's Russell Brandon with two outs and nobody on. A couple of singles. A couple of hard hit line drives for Brandon tonight. Six nothing tribe. Boy, it's fun when you can put runs up and makes it easier for the pitching staff, too. How about Fausto tonight? I mean, everything right now going well. For well, Cleveland. we mentioned it at the, at the outset that he's been pitching pretty well. He just hasn't been able to get a win, and they haven't been scoring for him. Tonight, a different story. They get him a few early. They got him five in the first two innings, and I'll tell you what, he's settled in, and he's been lights out. And the Indians have scored 32 runs in their last four games. And, I, and I'm talking about you've got Lester in there and you've got the, some good pitchers. Came back, so. Buckholtz. Yep. Lester. Yeah. Those are some pretty good pitchers. Look at he's focused, man. I, I want to see these unis come back. It may be them. Yeah. Doing well for the tribe tonight. 
Morgan makes the play. They're almost in left field as Brandon flies out. First time he's been retired this evening. Indians down in the fifth, but Carlos Santana, his first major league home run. Six nothing. Try. Any Northeast Ohio Mark's location. So head into your nearest Mark, where you'll find a huge selection and low prices every day. Six nothing tribe. Fausto Carmona working on a one hitter. He'll face the bottom third of the Nats batting order in the sixth. Bernadina, Kennedy, and Nieves. Bernadina, a flyout victim. His last time up, he's the only flyout tonight for Fausto Carmona. Well, Fausto has been lights out 70% strikes. He has 13 of 16 first pitch strikes. And now. Tough play here of Albueda to Carmona. Couldn't hold on. Could go as an infield single for Bernardino. Well, it, it's hustling down it's the It's going to have to because there's nothing you could do. Carmona and that flip. If Brandon couldn't get there, it was not going to be a, it was going to be an awfully tough play for Valbuena because Carmona, the way they had to come in and get it and just meet, it didn't match up really well. Here he comes from second base, and Brandon just gives way, and you weren't going to get away. That's got to be an infield single, and it is second hit of the night for the Nationals. So they get the leadoff batter aboard here in the sixth inning, just their second base runner tonight. Now Adam Kennedy. The only player in the Nationals lineup that has a base hit other than Bernadina. And he takes ball one. Kennedy was cut down on the double play back in the third inning by Will Nieves. Well, the only second guy he's been out of the stretch from, so we'll see how he reacts there. Throwing strikes out of the full windup. Nails the outside corner. One and one to Adam Kennedy. Pitch a little low, just the 70, 70th 7 0 pitch tonight for Carmona, and we're already in the sixth inning. And now 2 and 1 to Adam Kennedy. Carlos Santana wants the fastball. Get out of the ground it. a second. Yep. 4 6 3. Another twin killing for the tribe. Two away for the Nats here in the sixth inning. Now, on both hits that he's given up, on the very next hitter, Carmona's gotten the double play. So he has really done his job. Routine ground ball. He rolls over on it. A little tough flip right here, a little high from Valbuena, but easily turned. Yes, he's into it tonight, man. He sure is. He is in the groove. 
So now Will Nieves, who grounded into the other double play back in the third inning. It's Fausto again, back on the minimum number of batters faced. Nice play there by a fan on the foul ball. Will Nieves, 32 years old. He was a 47th round pick of the Padres back in 1995. It's on the ground to short. Donald. He'll make the play. Another quick inning for Fausto Carmona. He continues to cruise. We'll go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Six nothing. Drive. Indians up 6 nothing here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Fans having a good time as they're seeing a very well-pitched game by Fausto Carmona and some more Indians offense that really started back in the eighth inning on Wednesday night against the Red Sox. Tribe was up 3 nothing, and then they scored eight runs and just haven't turned off the offense since then. J.D. Martin delivers the first pitch for a ball. There's Fausto. You said it, Rick. He is in the zone tonight. Yeah, he is. He's got a look on his face you don't see often. I like the, how quickly he's working out on the mound. I, I like everything about his game tonight. He's been very solid. I mean, he's just, he's got tunnel vision. You know, when he's in there, when the day he's not pitching, and those guys like Santana or somebody would go deep, he'll be the first ones over there rubbing the towel on their head, joking around, having fun. He's all business tonight. He sure is. I think he's going to put in a request along with you for these uniforms again. You like well, him, and yeah. I think he loves them. I, good. <laughs> I'd love to see him again. You're recently joining us. The Indians are wearing their 1920 throwback jerseys, the year they won the World Series. Peralta hard on the ground, but to short. Guzman will make the play, and there's one out. Let's take a look at our Toyota recap brought to you by your Northern Ohio Toyota dealers. Shin Su Chu on RBI base hit. Got the track's first run home, and then it was all about Carlos Santana's first major league hit a double, drove in two with that. And then for an encore, first home run. His next time up in the bottom of the fifth inning, Carlos Santana, three RBI tonight, hitting in the three hole, and a warm reception after a delay in the tribe dugout. For a dealer near you, visit buyatoyota.com. What about your first major league home run, Rick? Did you get the silent treatment? Uh, not really, because mine never left the ballpark. Mine <laughs> right, stayed in. Answer, yeah. Inside the park That's home right. run, and then the home run ball was fouled off into the stands <laughs> in the next batter. <laughs> and that was that. That's Yeah, that's that's that. <laughs> and I'm sure Danberg, Rick Danberg, has already retrieved that home run ball for something, some tickets or some autographed bats. Here's Luis Valbuena with a one-and-one one count. 
Sack That's pretty good. Down. I mean, when you go have a game, you get your first major league hit, first ribby, you know, on the double, and then next time up, you get another home run. That's nice. That's a nice night. Yeah, a lot of first. First hit, first double, first homer, first RBI. And right now he's catching a shutout. I like that too. You know, Chris Perez was telling Dave Chodowski on the pregame show tonight. He said he enjoyed throwing to him. He said, well, it's great for me. I enjoyed throwing to Santana. And caught a good game yesterday with Jake Westbrook, and then Chris Perez finished it out. Now Buena grounds to second. Kennedy makes the play. Two down. That'll bring Jason Donald to the plate. Jason with a single and a run scored back in the second inning. Flew out to right in the fourth. Donald with good contact both times at the plate. We were talking about Carlos Santana, Rick, and Tom Boschenek has reminded us that in two starts, 15 innings pitched, two earned runs behind the plate for Carlos Santana. I wonder how fat, how he came up with that so fast. <laughs> it's good. Zimmerman. Look at that play. Great play to retire Jason Donald for the final out of the sixth inning. And the Indians are done here in the sixth, but they still lead it. Six nothing. We'll head to the seventh. AT&T.com. AT&T. Rethink possible. By the Sierra from GMC. Never send a truck to do a Sierra's job. And by Wendy's. You know when it's real. Wendy's. Nice night tonight in downtown Cleveland. Tribe ahead. 6-0 and a first pitch out for Niger Morgan as he flies out to left. So yeah. one pitch, one out here in the seventh. Second time that the ball has been hit in the air tonight. Both of them going to left field. So Niger Morgan now 0 for 3. Fausto Carmona working on a two hitter. And tonight's scoreboard update is brought to you by Wendy's. You know when it's real, Wendy's. There's Christian Guzman struck out and grounded out. His two previous times at the plate. Carmona continues to pound the strike zone. Once again, he jumps ahead, 0 and 2. And a grounder to first. Brannion to Carmona covering, two away. Now Carmona with four strikeouts on the night, and he has been dealing. 
I mean, a guy that doesn't strike out a lot of guys, but when he gets ahead of the hitters like he has tonight, he definitely has the great stuff that he can strike you out because he expands the strike zone. But it's beautiful when you watch him see, get the ground balls, mixes in five strikeouts and only three balls in the air. Now Adam Dunn, who grounded out and struck out his pr previous two times at the plate. And when you're in that groove, you like to work quickly like Carmona is. Two outs here in the seventh inning, and he still hasn't reached the 80 pitch mark yet. He's at 78. Just two hits for the Nationals. Both retired then on double plays, so Fausto has faced the minimum. I must have taken a page off of uh, Justin Masterson in his last start. Just watched him go at it. He faced only 29 hitters in his game against the Red Sox. Carmona, he's faced the minimum tonight. And we are in the seventh. And a 1 2 count to Adam Dunn. And you said it too as a fielder. You love when that pitcher uh, works quickly. Nothing better. I mean, you'll see great plays because the defenders are ready. They're on their toes. You're throwing strikes. You're ready to go. 70% of them. Let's get after it. This is his first or second 3 2 count. Infield shift on for Adam Dunn. A change up there, huh? Yeah. Dunn way out in front. You know, they're geared 94. And he takes it off. It's 88. Good pitch. Dunn down swinging. Sixth strikeout for Carmona today. The Nationals go three up, three down. The Indians, six nothing leaders. Field, enjoy a refreshing beverage and a delicious overstuffed sandwich at any Panini's location. From Westlake to Willoughby, Panini's is your patio headquarters. For a list of all their locations, visit Panini'sGrill.com. Gorgeous night for a game. Fans enjoying themselves on throwback to 1920s night tonight. And the Indians leading this one six to nothing, and they'll have a pinch hitter start off the. Bottom of the seventh, Shelly Duncan. Go bat for Trevor Crow in the leadoff spot. And he'll take a pitch down low for ball one. So J.D. Martin, after giving up five runs in the first two innings, Rick's done a nice job settling down here. Yeah, he, he really did. His one little mistake that uh, solo home run in the fifth, but after he gave up the four, he has done a nice job of settling in. Shelly Duncan takes a strike. Two and one now. 
to Duncan. Part of the sixth father-son combination in Indians history to play. Of course, his dad, Dave, played with the Tribe back in the 70s. Also was a coach for the Indians. And this may be why Shelly Duncan is in here, Rick. I'm sure it is. You remember earlier in the game, Crow fouled that ball right off his knee. And I guarantee you, it has tightened up on him. So, you know, 6 nothing ball game. Let's get him in and get it iced down and see what's going on. Full count now to Duncan. And he hits that one to third. Zimmerman. Time to read the logo and one away. Hey, Brown season is right around the corner, and your kids this summer can learn to play like the pros at the Cleveland Browns Youth Football Camp. Children ages 8 to 14 can learn the football skills they need at the Browns training facility in Berea from June 21st through June 25th. Space is limited, though, so log on to clevelandbrowns.com and register today. That camp is an uh, awesome time for the youngsters to learn from the pros. So one away for Shinsu Chu here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Chu tonight hit by a pitch in the first, singled in the second, scored both times eventually, and grounded out to first his last time up back in the fourth inning. And he hits that one on a line to right. Bernadina, a few steps back, two away. One time now for the Miller. Taste greatness moment. Carlos Santana. First major league hit a double to knock in two in the second inning. And that is indeed tonight's Miller. Taste greatness moment. He'll keep that ball. Carlos Santana, a couple of hits tonight. The next time he came up in the fifth inning, it was a solo home run. And he's at the plate now after a warm round of applause. Santana tonight. Two for three. He reached out an error in the first inning, so he's been on base all three times he's come to the plate tonight. That one inside. Santana playing in just his second major league game this evening. They're getting the call yesterday. Lou Marson sent down to Columbus. Sean Burnett getting loose in the Washington bullpen. As J.D. Martin will deliver pitch 100 here to Carlos Santana. Swing and a miss. Big curve just outside. Well, good pitch selection. He just missed on the outside corner. That's That was a good selection there after he fouled off. He's talking to himself right now. I think he thought he made a very good pitch. The payoff. High in the air on the infield. Three players surrounding it. It's going to be Guzman, the shortstop, to make the catch. So the Indians go three up, three down in the seventh, but they still lead it. Six nothing here at Progressive Field on throwback night to the 1920s.
ninth inning here at Progressive Field. Hitters four, five, and six in the Nationals lineup. Shelly Duncan, who came on for Trevor Crow to pinch hit in the seventh, is in left. Austin Kearns moves from left over to center. And Ryan Zimmerman, who's 0 for the series thus far, 0 for 6, 0 for 2 tonight with the ground out and strikeout, will lead it off, followed by Willingham and Harris. As Carmona has faced just 21 batters tonight. Nationals have two singles, haven't gotten a walk. Both times they've singled, they've been erased on double plays, but that one is not going to be a single. That'll be a home run. Ryan Zimmerman way out of here, and the Nationals are on the board. Yeah. He can do damage, and that's the first time he has done anything in this series, but it was a long one. It breaks up the shutout for Carmona. That looked like it was a little high sinker. And he turned that around in a hurry, so he gets him on the board for Zimmerman, his 13th home run. There you'll see it right there, middle of the plate. He hadn't been there all night long. And Willingham, the next batter, first pitch swinging, grounding out to Peralta at third for a one out. All right, time now for our trivia answer to our AT&T trivia question here tonight. Who holds the most major? Who holds the major league record for the most homers in a six-game stretch with at least a home run in each game? I got to say Frank Howard, man, the big man. I think you're probably right. Ten. Nice. 1968. It's brought to you by AT&T. He was with the Washington Senators. He used to wear sudden Sam McDowell out, who back then pitched with the Indians. And they may have been a part of it in that streak. And McDowell, of course, was such a dominant pitcher for the Indians in the 60s. But sometimes certain hitters just have that pitcher's number. Big Frank Howard, he could hit him a long way, and he was uh, so intimidating. You know, in the batter's box, about six foot eight, and he was three hundred pounds. He was a, I mean, he was like a giant. Yeah, he was and a, one of the nicest men in all of baseball. That's what I've heard. I was uh, fortunate enough to play for him, and he was the hitting coach for the Milwaukee Brewers back in the mid '80s. Two and two now to Willie Harris. What's the best thing that Frank taught you on hitting a baseball? He, he was the most positive guy I've ever been around. And, you know, he was truly a firm believer in confidence. And, you know, he just kept you in a good frame of mind. And their ball, let's see, that one just goes right down, gets him in the shin. Yeah, Wiley Crawford. old veteran, Jerry Crawford right there. Santana smart enough to go give him a little bit of time. And that's what you do. All right, you feeling okay? I'm all right, kid, let's go. So two and two now to Willie Harris with one out in the eighth inning. Fouls off another one. Willie Harris tonight, a ground out and strikeout. When you're in the eighth inning and these hitters have only batted two previous times, you know the starter's going well. Carmona swinging a miss. Santana will throw down to first. Seven strikeout tonight for Fausto. Two away here in the eighth inning. Let's head back to the STO update desk now and head down to Cincinnati Royals and Reds. Dave. Yeah, I need some help from you guys. A word like fabulous or sensational for Johnny Gomes. Two three-run homers already. This one in the third, and it's 11-5 to five right now in the fourth inning. In the fifth inning, Reds lead back to you. Nice, Dave. I like it. So he wants one for Johnny Gomes, right? I just said uh, it's it'll be relayed to him in a minute. Okay. Very good. He can use it on his next cut in. <laughs> Here's Roger Bernadina. Fly out and a single in the sixth inning. Bernadina cut down then on a double play. Two outs for the Nationals here in the eighth inning. Wearing their 1924 throwback jerseys. They won the American League. They won the World Series for the American League. I'm thinking they don't want to wear their uniforms again. They want to get back into their normal ones where I'm thinking the Indians may want to wear theirs again. I would say you've probably nailed that sentiment. Indians up 6-1 to one here in the eighth inning. Two outs, nobody on. 
Two and two now to Roger Bernardina, the right fielder. Hitting seventh in manager Jim Riggleman's lineup tonight. Pitch off the plate. Full count now to Bernardina. Fausto hasn't missed many tonight. 98 pitches, 67 strikes. Yeah, his third full count tonight. Bernadina hits that one hard to center. Kearns going back. Should have room. And he makes the catch on the warning track. So the Nationals retired in the eighth inning, but they get a run on a solo blast from Ryan Zimmerman. Bottom of the eighth. Up next, try by five. Talking to Fausto Carmona here, and a nice pitching performance for Fausto thus far. When he's yelling down the dugout, it must be to Tim Belcher, but I'll tell you what, there's no doubt he could easily finish this game. Hafner, Kearns, and Brannion. Hitters 4, 5, and 6, and Manning act his lineup here in the bottom of the eighth inning. After with a sack fly in the first inning. 0 for 2 tonight. Flew out and grounded out his other two times though. 19,484 fans watching this one tonight. As Travis Hafner swings and misses. Tribe trying to win their fourth in a row. Close out this series tomorrow afternoon at 107. Steven Strasburg on the hill for Washington. David Huff for Cleveland. will be on Channel 3 and Miguel Batista. Stay loose in the Nationals bullpen as J.D. Martin is going to try to go the distance. Hafner deep to right. That one's going to go off the wall. He'll add to second. Bernadina's throw oh, right there. See you later. Yep, got him. What a nice play by Bernadina. That is a very nice play off the wall. He sat, waited for it, realized he had it, and then fired a strike to second base in Guzman. That was a very nice play. Ball hit right on the nose. Hafner smokes it. And he says, I'm going to go anyway. You see, he just played it, and he's the left-hander, and he was already into his throwing motion, but fires a strike. And Guzman put, applies the tag, so it'll be a single. Now Kearns first pitch swing flies out to center field two quick outs here in the eighth inning for the tribe. Well the newest Indians team shop opens at Westgate Plaza that'll be in Fairview Park on Friday. Shop opens at 530 and the early bird giveaways include AMPM all you can eat seats three packs to the first 25 fans 
and to two dugout suites for the July 4th game. That's unbelievable. So visit uh, Indians Team Shop for more details. Sounds like a good time. Friday, June 18th. It's Russell Brannion to the plate. He has a couple of hits tonight, both singles. Also a line out to left in the fifth inning. It's so two outs, nobody on. Tribe ahead by five here in the eighth inning. J.D. Martin, who gave up five runs in the first two innings combined, has really settled in nicely here. He's given up just one run since then. That solo home run to Carlos Santana back in the fifth. Well, he left the change up up to Santana, hit out of the ballpark. But, you know, he really did. He settled in, and he gave that bullpen a rest for uh, for Jim Riggleman. And, you know, he did. He settled in and did a nice job for him. Just keep it there. The way Carmona's pitching, you know, he, you know, they didn't have much of a chance after they scored four in the second. Yeah. Not much room for error tonight. No, there was not. Two and two to Branyan. You can hear J.D. Martin say on the release, he kind of grunted when he threw that, knew he didn't release it where he wanted. 112 pitches tonight, though, for J.D. Martin. And Branyan hits that one high in the air to right center field. Deep. Morgan to the wall. Can't get it. Gone. Home run, Russell Branyan just kept drifting and out of here. And that's his first home run at home this season. Yes, it is. And Jim Yates from New Albany, Ohio. $300 on a Shell gas card. So in the last two nights, we've given away $1,500, bucks, 5 drive homers. That ball had some carry to it. He was challenging him right there. He wasn't going to walk him. He threw him a fastball down, and Russell's a good low ball hitter. And you can see that ball. It scatters him in the pen. It takes a go. He can't believe it. Look at it. He's shocked that it went out. Well, a big man hit it, and it had a little bit of carry. So second home run of the night. We give some more gas away, and Brannion's first home run in Cleveland this year. And that'll be it for The new pitcher on throwback to the 20s night. There's some fans in 1920s garb. I don't know if they're fans. I think they're employees. <laughs> well, they're both, right? Sure. Yes, whatever you say. <laughs> yes, they are. You know that, Mel. That's why. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, Miguel Batista. J.D. Martin hung in there in that one solo home run. I guess they felt that pitch count was too much, but he settled in. Went uh, seven and two-thirds innings. Gave up nine hits and seven runs. 
Johnny Peral to the batter. He pops that one high in the air. The Amos will give it a look, but it's out of play. Indians up seven to one here. Johnny Peralta tonight, a double. Fly out and ground out. Also scored a run back in the second inning. Well, fans having a good time here tonight with this throwback night. During that pitching change, they had a 1920s black and white Mickey Mouse cartoon playing on the big board here. Meanwhile, a ground out to short. Guzman makes the throw, and the Indians are done in the eighth. But they add another, a solo home run for Russell Branyan. We go to the ninth. Tribe leads it 7-1. This one seven to one and Fausto Carmona on the hill looking for the complete game. He surrendered only three hits tonight. And Adam Kennedy will lead it off and Fausto Carmona has faced just one batter above the minimum. It's Kennedy Nieves and Morgan hitters eight nine and one scheduled to bat here in the ninth inning. And Kennedy hits that one hard to right but right at Shinsu Chu one down. Don't forget to stick around after the game tonight for the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care post-game show. We'll have highlights from tonight's game, a post-game interview, and also highlights from around the majors. Then after that, join us for Chuck's Last Call. He'll take your calls and emails following the Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care post-game show. So make sure you join us for both Conrad's and then Chuck's Last Call, all tonight right here on Sports Time Ohio. So one away for Will Nieves. They're grounded into a 5-4-3 double play in the third. And he fouls that one off. He also grounded out to short in the fifth inning. Sixth inning, I beg your pardon. So here in the ninth, he'll bat for just the third time. Well, Fausto is, I mean, he's got a chance to face just one above the minimum. With that home run by Zimmerman back in the eighth inning, that busted up the shutout. He has been fantastic tonight. Just misses there. So one and one to Will Nieves. Tomorrow the Washington Nationals and Indians will finish out this three-game series at 107. We'll have it for you on Channel 3. Dave Chodowski, Indians on deck, 1230. Steven Strasburg will make his second Major League start. First on the road, taking on David Huff. Hope he can join us. And of course, the game also simulcast here on Sports Time Ohio. So if you're not here at the ballpark, join us on the network. We'd love to see you here. Yeah, it's just got a piece. Carmona quickly off the hill. Makes the play. Two down. Well, 
Well, he gets off the mound very well. Bear hands it. He doesn't rush. Gives a good feed. And gets out number two. Fans come to their feet for Niger Morgan. Two outs. Oh, no, we got a pinch hit. Yes, we do. Gonzalez, Alberto yep. Gonzalez. Alberto Gonzalez. Well, bad here. Pinch hitting for Morgan. First ah, pitch swing. We'll do it. Popping it up. First base side. Valbuena. Game over. Indians win seven to one. Their fourth straight victory. And tomorrow the tribe will go for the sweep of the Washington Nationals at 107. Huff against Strasburg. So manager Manny Acton went in the first two games against his former club here this weekend. Well, I mean, it, it, great storyline. Carmona was outstanding, gets his first win in a month. The kid Santana gets his first major league hit, RBI, double, and also home run in the ball game. They played great. The 1920 uniforms look great. It was a great game all the way around. Sure was. Fans had a good time. Entertainment was good. Got to hear some big band music between innings tonight for throwback to the 1920s. The Indians down their 1920 world champion jerseys, and they look pretty good out of it. 